everyone. So the Lakers are still 10 days away from officially being able to make a big trade. Technically, they could go and make some smaller, minor move right now, but more likely than not, the Lakers aren't going to do anything until at least the 15th of January. Uh, personally, I wouldn't expect anything on the 15th. I'd be looking more towards closer to the trade deadline. Maybe you end up having something like a Rui trade that happened, you know, like two weeks or whatever before the trade deadline. But more likely than not, we're not going to see anything uh, until the 15th. But that doesn't mean that the Lakers can't do anything anymore. Uh, so... Today is also the official day that 10-day contracts uh, can be signed by teams. So 10-day contracts can be signed each year beginning on January 5th and are exactly what they sound like, contracts that cover 10 days, including the day they are signed. A player who signs a 10-day deal on January 5th uh, would remain eligible to play for his team through January 14th, but not on January 15th unless he signs a new contract. Uh, a team can sign a player to as many as two 10-day contracts before committing to him for the rest of the season, or as in many cases, letting him go. A player can't sign three standard 10-day contracts with the same team, but after signing two 10-day uh, deals with one club, he is allowed to sign another with a separate club. Just wanted to give those that aren't familiar with 10-day contracts or are curious uh, as to what does this mean, how does this work, well, there you go quick little brief understanding for you all. Of course, if you have any questions or anything, let me know down in the comments. I'll try to answer as many as I can. But moving into it, this allows the Lakers to do several things. Obviously, uh, look at various talent uh, that is remaining free agents. I mean, I don't really see that huge like home run guy. Obviously, everyone that's still a free agent at this time is a free agent for various reasons, but that doesn't mean that you can't bring somebody in that can have a minor impact or a guy that maybe could fit a need. You know, think of a center, right? The Lakers could really use a center. Well, maybe you could get a guy like a Myers Leonard, right? That would be something that could be very impactful for the Lakers. I know some people want, you know, a Dwight Howard. Personally, I don't see it. Uh, he did just sign a new deal with the Philippines, I believe. Uh, so I don't expect Dwight Howard to just all of a sudden come out of left field and sign with the Lakers, but the Lakers can go uh, look to get other pieces, right? There are several centers uh, that are out there. There are several, I mean, players, period, right? Uh, you could look at maybe uh, a type of uh, power forward center combo, right? Maybe like a Serge Ibaka, somebody that could play both spots, block some shots, things like that. Obviously, again, the Lakers could use some size. Personally, I would look at a Myers Leonard that's available right now. I was last year on the uh, let's go get Hassan White Whiteside bandwagon, but I just think now he hasn't played in like two years. I, uh, at least Myers Leonard got some run last year, uh, so maybe he could come in. Also, he's got good size, good length, stretches the floor. That could be something. Also, if there's, if you want, I I'm thinking about doing a list of various uh, players, both at the center position as well as like the guard position or whatever. Obviously, if the Lakers sign somebody, then we'll talk about it. But I was thinking about kind of doing a list for like the guard role, uh, which I'm going to touch on why I think the Lakers could look at a guard here in a minute, uh, as well as like the center role. So again, let me know your picks for that down in the comments, and I'll put a, a video together and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to kind of hear where your guys' minds are at. But uh, again, center position is something of need. Obviously, the Lakers would love to address that in uh, a trade, right? If it's for like, say, an Andre Drummond or a Valanchunez or, you know, a Vu, somebody that's available. Obviously, the Lakers would love to get a more just established center. But I mean, you never know, right? You bring in a Myers Leonard for, say, two 10 day contracts. What if he's great for you in that minimal role? You just need somebody to come in and play 10 to 15 minutes a game. You don't need somebody to come and play a bunch of a bunch of like heavy minutes or a bunch of heavy roles. Right? You just need a guy that can come in, fill in some gaps, fill in some spots, right? be just a quality rotation piece. Um, somebody that has an understanding of like, hey, I'm not coming to this team to start, I'm not coming to this team to play a major role. I'm coming to this team just to kind of fill in a void uh, here and there, right? Like that would be nice. Uh, and then that would be one less need that you have to address come a trade, right? Because like, again, let's say... Let's say you do sign a Myers Leonard, right? Well, then you could bring in Myers Leonard. Let's say he's great for you and you're like, hey, let's sign him to a long-term deal. Well, now you don't need to go get an Andre Drummond or you don't need to go get and trade for like a Valanchunas or something, right? Where you can just kind of focus on, okay, we need the piece. Maybe you're just trading for Zach Levine. 
right? Because Zach Levine's contract's big enough to where you're going to have to match salaries. Adding, even though Drummond's on a vet minimum, it's still another like three, you know, three and a half million that they would have to basically match. Uh, just again, makes things a little more tough. So if you could kind of solve that without having to make a trade, then again, you could go focus on more uh, other needs that the Lakers could use. Uh, the other option would be like somebody in the guard position, right? Guys that come to mind would be like an Austin Rivers or like a John Wall, though I'm not really super hype on a John Wall. Um, you know, there, there's several names again. I'll go through a list of guys. But the reason, because I'm sure many of you are thinking right now, like a guard, like the Lakers don't need a guard. I wouldn't mind the Lakers working out a guard, like a point guard or somebody that can make some plays. Because if the Lakers do make a trade, they're probably getting rid of D'Lo and possibly Gabe Vincent. So you're going to need something I've talked about is playmaking, right? Outside of LeBron James, who else is your other playmaker? Yeah, Austin Reeves may be able to make some plays here and there and in spots, but He's had his struggles with turnovers and just uh, getting uh, getting through uh, just aggressive defenses as well as just uh, he struggles with the point of attack. So, you know, to go get a guy that maybe has some experience in that role. Honestly, I would have loved Ricky Rubio or Drogic. Like the, either of those guys would have been great, but both of those guys have retired. So unless you could convince them to come out of retirement for it, which I don't think so, especially Rubio. I know he's got some things going on that he needs to figure out. Um, but I, I could see the Lakers maybe looking to bring in uh, some type of guard, combo guard, point guard, somebody that can just make plays. If that happens, again, that is another signal, in my opinion, that the Lakers are going to make a move, right? Because again, you're, you're probably trading D'Angelo Russell. You're Possibly, especially if you're going after, like, say, a Zach Levine or something, you're probably trading Gabe Vincent. And so, regardless, you're going to need another guard that can just step in in a role and make plays, right? Obviously, again, you could have Austin Reeves, but you're still going to need another playmaker. Uh, if you can get a guy, like I mentioned, uh, an Austin Rivers or maybe a John Wall again, a little worried about John Wall given the Westbrook situation. Um, and especially when you don't have guys that uh, can shoot <laughs> on this team. But, you know, again, you're just looking for a guy to kind of be a body just to add some depth, right? It, may, it, it could even be a guy that you never really play, but just to kind of have him on the roster just in case, right? As like a break glass in case of emergency guy or, you know, a guy that can just play in spots, you know, give you getting like 10 minutes a game or whatever, that could be something. Uh, so it's exciting because that means that the Lakers can start getting some action going here, right? Kind of navigate and stretch through some of these free agents and maybe see, you know, what looks good. Now the Lakers can have two uh, guys on a roster at one time, two 10-day contracts at one time. I believe they changed that rule uh, for the Lakers, or not just for the Lakers, but for the league. But regardless, right, I expect uh, Rob Palinka kind of navigate through some of these guys, kind of see what is out there. There are some names that could maybe make some sense for the Lakers that could maybe fit and play a nice role, uh, but time will tell. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Are you excited? Are you like, yes, yes, some 10-day contracts. It gives us some something to work with, potentially. Uh, is there any names that come out that you think of that are like, oh, I would love to go get this guy or go get that guy? Again, I'll probably do a breakdown of guards, and I'll probably do a breakdown of, like, big men uh, to kind of just go over, and, uh, and you know, why not, right? Let's let's see what's out there, and kind of, I'll give my breakdown and my takes on it, and then, of course, I want to hear yours. So, anyway, give me some ideas down in the comment section below. Definitely keep in mind that any of the free agents, anybody that's available, they're more likely than not, uh, not going to have some major impact. Again, I trust Rob Palenka. I trust what he can do. I trust him, you know, kind of finding that diamond in the rough. That would be nice, right? Get a guy that could come out of left field and be a surprise. Like, look at a guy uh, like Cam Reddish, right? Cam Reddish has been a real gem this year. Obviously not on the offense side, but defensively, right? So maybe you could find that guy that, you know, maybe the Lakers were interested in in free, agent, but in free agency, but didn't really make sense to sign on a deal. This kind of gives you that opportunity to, to play a little bit, right? Okay, well, you know, we were we were interested in Myers Leonard, but we didn't want to sign him to, you know, a two-year deal or anything like that. So now we can bring him in, 
get a good look at him, see if he's a guy that kind of fits what we're trying to do here. And if it does, then, okay, let's get him. Let's get him signed long-term, bring him on, and let's go make this push to kind of try to turn the season around, especially, right? Because the Lakers' season has just been rough, right? But anyway, I just wanted to kind of clarify and and let everyone be aware because, you know, I don't want to see anybody be like, oh, well, you know, <laughs> this guy isn't going to – well, yeah, they're free agents for a reason. But anyway, again – Love to hear thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate you all. See you in the next one. Thank you.